Yes, you. Okay. Uh, you seem to enjoy being slandered as the possible rival, so you a better one. Uh, you're an academician, so you understand the word grifter. I think you're a grifter. I think you're a con man mm -hmm. taking advantage of your position in academia, Professor Emeritus, and all that. So okay. let me give you an argument of why. I think okay, let me repeat that for the audience. He says. I think you're a grifter. I think you're taking advantage of your position in academia you're as a, a professor man. emeritus. A you're a con man. Taking advantage of, taking advantage of my yeah. position. To, to actually make money or whatever, whether enjoy yourself, whatever. Here's why. Okay? And here's why. So the Arctic is melting, and between 2016 plus or minus three years, it's all gone. Ice gone, Arctic. And then, I heard you say, end of humanity, 2025 or so, very scientific. So that's 25. You've not demonstrated any scientific link between the disappearance of Arctic ice and the extinction of humanity, except one quotation from the president of Finland. Now, you call that science? Bullshit. Okay, so the issue here is that I have pointed out that we're headed for an ice-free Arctic in the not too distant future. And you quoting only the president of Finland, I've concluded that that means the end of the human experience. And my response to that is, if I'm a con man, I'm doing a really shitty job of it because I haven't received a paycheck since May of 2009. That's a long time. Okay, so I'm doing it for vanity. I'm a very vain person, yeah. apparently. The links are shown in a 32,000 word essay at my blog, GuyMcPherson.com, called Climate Change Summary and Update. There I demonstrate with links to the referee journal literature more than 20 self-reinforcing feedback loops based on the Arctic alone. Let me mention three, any of which leads to our near-term demise because of the associated rapid rise in temperature resulting from loss of ice in the Arctic. First, albedo or reflectance. Without ice to reflect the in incoming radiation, the Arctic Ocean will warm up very quickly. Even the Washington Post, maybe two weeks ago, interviewing scientists who are working in the Arctic, even the Washington Post, the mouthpiece of empire that it is, owned by a guy named Bezos, who bought the Washington Post with the money he made owning Amazon.com, by getting rid of the albedo, the reflectance, we're left with only a blue ocean. So the, the ice-free Arctic is called the blue ocean event. And the rapid heating associated with that loss of reflectance will be for profound. And this is all described in that long essay. I mentioned climate change summary and update at climatepherson.com. Second, when was that last updated? That was last updated in early August of 2016 because at that point it was clear. I stopped for two reasons. One, Sam Carana had just come out with an analysis July 15th, I believe, pointing out that we're headed for 10 degrees Celsius global average temperature rise, 10.02 degrees, above baseline by the middle of 2026. So I, I, and the, that albedo effect has already taken place, right? Well, yes, yes, yes. Once the rest of it goes, there will be that additional effect, but then that effect will max out. Once, once it's all gone, it's all gone. That's right. And so based on albedo, it will max out. And Peter Wadhams, director of the Ocean Physics Program at Cambridge University, estimates the increased energy just from the blue ocean event will be more than three times, closer to four times, what it was in the 1970s when we had a pretty reasonable amount of ice there. Is there scientific consensus on that? 
The refereed journal literature is the gold standard of science. I'm not sure what you mean by scientific consensus. When a paper gets published in the refereed journal literature, if it is not subsequently retracted, it does represent the scientific consensus. The second phenomenon that could easily lead to the demise of humanity is a very abrupt release of methane of which there are billions of tons found in the relatively shallow seafloor of the Arctic Ocean. Natalia Shikova and her research team have been conducting research on this topic for a decade and a half or more and concluded at the European Geophysical Union meeting in 2008, about 10 years ago, that an abrupt release of 50 gigatons of methane was highly possible at any time. Their research was conducted at, on the East Siberian Arctic Shelf. That would be enough to warm the planet sufficiently that we would be unable to grow grains at scale in the Northern Hemisphere within the same growing season. Without grains grown at scale, no civilization persists. And third is latent heat. Latent heat is the idea we're all familiar with. We show up at a party, we put a bunch of glass in an ice, we fill the rest of it with liquid, we walk around for the next hour or two, and as long as there's a little sliver of ice left in the glass, a little sliver of ice, all the energy from the ambient air and from our hand that is influencing that ice is going to melt the ice. It takes 79.2 calories to melt a gram of ice into a milliliter of water. Once it's all water, that same 79.2 calories warms that one milliliter of water by 79.2 degrees Celsius. That's scalding hot. A little bit of ice goes a long way. These are three of more than 20 self-reinforcing feedback loops that will accelerate profoundly and stunningly quickly with the absence of ice on the Arctic Ocean. There's also terrestrial permafrost, which if you've seen in the video within the last four months or so, you've seen large areas of permafrost slumping down a hill in places like Russia because the permafrost isn't permanently frozen anymore. And so it has become a mudslide that is releasing methane and carbon dioxide. So there's plenty of science to support the notion that an ice-free Arctic leads to a very abrupt rise in global average temperature. So much evidence that even the president of Finland, who's a politician, has accepted that notion and said as much in front of President Trump, who promptly changed the subject, not surprisingly. So the science is all clear and is all freely available and is linked to abundant referee journal literature. I'm not going to talk about whether I'm a grifter or whether I'm a con man or not because I think that's totally ludicrous. I don't get paid for this. I don't get paid for any of the work I've done for the last nine years. Had I not saved a lot of money when I was getting a lot of money for doing relatively little work, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this. I wouldn't be able to continue feeding myself. But I could never convince people who are unconvinced by evidence. So I'll just leave that right there. <laughs>